Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for your patience. <coughs> Secretary General will make a short statement and then be happy to take your questions. Secretary General. Good afternoon. We have just uh, finished uh, a very constructive meeting uh, of uh, the NATO defense uh, ministers together with uh, High Representative Vice President uh, Federica uh, Mogherini, where we addressed uh, NATO EU uh, cooperation. And uh, um, uh, the NATO EU cooperation uh, is uh, now closer than it has ever been uh, before. And this was underscored. Uh, by the joint uh, declaration that I signed together with uh, President uh, Tusk and President uh, Juncker in uh, July. In December, Federica and I will uh, uh, report to the ministers uh, on the practical steps uh, NATO and the EU are taking to move our cooperation to uh, the next uh, uh, level. And we are uh, making our plans a uh, 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 reality. We are already uh, seeing that uh, working together pays uh, off, for instance, in the Aegean Sea. Thanks to our joint uh, efforts uh, together with Greece and Turkey, the flow of migrants uh, has decreased uh, substantially. That is why last night we decided to continue our Aegean uh, deployment. We are making a difference, achieving more through cooperation than we ever could in isolation. But the situation in the Mediterranean remains extremely serious. And we continue to see illegal human trafficking and tragic loss of life at record high uh, numbers. Last night, uh, NATO allies decided uh, that NATO's new Operation Sea Guardian will support EU's Operation Sophia. Within two weeks, NATO's, uh, NATO ships and planes uh, will be in the central Mediterranean, ready to help uh, the EU's uh, uh, Operation uh, Sophia with uh, situational awareness and uh, provide logistical uh, support. This is yet another example of NATO and the EU working hand in hand to increase European uh, security. Today, we also discussed concrete ways to counter hybrid threats, enhance cyber security, and coordinate exercises. And we are exploring ways to work together to project greater stability in our neighborhood. NATO has unique expertise in this area. We are currently putting it to good use in Jordan, where we have trained hundreds of Iraqi officers and last night, uh, we confirmed that training and capacity building would start inside Iraq in January. This is an important contribution to the fight against ISIL. Together with our AWACS surveillance uh, aircraft, now flying in support of the counter-ISIL coalition. This morning, we also uh, discussed recent uh, initiatives <coughs> to strengthen the European defense. Because we must <coughs> make sure that our efforts are uh, complementary. Duplication would be in no one's interest. Complementarity and transparency will bolster European security and the transatlantic bond. Let me underline, a strong Europe will make NATO stronger, especially by delivering more capabilities and by increasing defence spending among European allies something NATO has encouraged for many years. Over the past two days, we assessed the various challenges uh, confronting NATO. We took stock uh, of our progress since the Warsaw Summit, and we mapped out the road ahead. We are as united uh, as ever in our determination to protect our citizens. So with that, I am ready to take your questions. We'll start with the Reuters in the front row, please. Secretary General, on Sea Guardian, what assets can NATO provide that the EU does not have? And on the Aegean, how can you ensure that the Aegean mission can continue next year when Turkey says there's no need for it to continue? Thank you. Within two weeks, there will be NATO assets in the central Mediterranean ready to provide support to the EU Operation Sophia. And we will have 
planes, uh, maritime patrol uh, uh, aircrafts uh, in the central Mediterranean, and we will have uh, uh, ships. And this uh, will add value to the presence of uh, vessels uh, uh, from the European uh, Union. Um, so far, uh, Greece and Turkey uh, have announced that they will offer ships to Sea Guardian uh, as of the 7th of November. Uh, Greece, Italy, Spain and Turkey will provide air assets. Uh, and uh, that will be uh, mainly maritime patrol aircrafts. And I think that is extremely important to help uh, the European Union, Operation Sophia, uh, obtain a better situational awareness. Uh, then, of course, there are also other allies considering. Uh, and I talked with several also non-EU uh, allies, uh, and I know that they are considering also to uh, contribute with different kinds of assets. Uh, so I will be able to tell you more about that, uh, uh, hopefully in the near uh, future. When it comes to the Aegean activity, we um, decided uh, yesterday evening that we, we will continue uh, the uh, NATO presence in the Aegean. And the reason why we decided to continue the uh, NATO presence is that partly the NATO presence provides operational uh, concrete support to the efforts of the uh, Coast Guards, uh, the Greek and the Turkish Coast Guards, and uh, to uh, Frontex, the European Border Agency. And we have seen uh, a very substantial reduction in the uh, numbers of uh, illegal uh, crossings, and uh, we have been able to cut the lines of uh, uh, the uh, criminal networks uh, organizing uh, the illegal uh, crossings. And one of the reasons why we, have, why we have been able to do so is that many of the first sightings has been done by NATO vessels. Uh, partly also because they are able to operate both in uh, Turkish and Greek uh, um, territorial waters. And also, I think it is important to understand that NATO presence in the Aegean Sea adds value because it is a platform for enhanced cooperation between a non-EU uh, NATO ally, Turkey, with uh, Greece uh, and uh, improved uh, uh, cooperation between uh, Turkey and the European Union. So both for the operational reasons, but also as a political platform, the NATO presence in the Aegean has proven, has proven very uh, uh, important. We'll go to Al Arabiya in row three, please. Mr. Major, Nordin Fridi from Al Arabiya News Channel. I have a question regarding the uh, last night discussion, um, NATO started last week to the airspace observation with the, its AWACS uh, in the north of um, Syria and Iraq. Uh, is this a beginning of a bigger role or NATO role will be limited to this operation in the fight against Daesh? And if you don't mind, I imagine that you discussed also the Turkish incursion, uh, uh, military incursion inside the Iraqi territories, which is a problem for Mr. Haider al-Abadi. NATO contribute to the fight against ISIL and uh, terrorism in many different uh, ways. Uh, all NATO allies uh, participate in the uh, coalition, uh, and uh, it is of uh, uh, great importance for the coalition that NATO allies to decades of uh, joint operations uh, and, exercising, uh, and exercises have been able to develop interoperability, uh, the ability to work together in these kind of military operations. So in that sense, the coalition uh, takes great advantage of uh, uh, interoperability that has been developed uh, through NATO over decades. Uh, second, we, we provide direct support uh, by uh, the training of uh, Iraqi officers. We will uh, increase that training uh, uh, and uh, start to train also inside Iraq, not only the training of Iraqi officers in Jordan. And we have started last week, on the 20th of October, uh, to fly uh, AWACS surveillance uh, planes to uh, help uh, improve, increase the air picture uh, for the international uh, coalition conducting their airstrikes uh, over Syria and, uh, and uh, Iraq. Uh, then we will assess uh, um, what more NATO can do, uh, and we will assess the need uh, for, uh, for uh, 
stepping up, uh, for instance, the training inside uh, Iraq. Let me also add that uh, part of the broader picture is that NATO also contributes to the fight against uh, Daesh, ISIL, by for, instance, by, for instance, working with countries like Jordan and Tunisia. They are islands of stability in, uh, in a region with a lot of instability. And uh, supporting, helping them, for instance, helping Tunisia with developing their uh, special operation forces and intelligence is an important contribution to make sure that Tunisia remains stable and is able to uh, fight uh, terrorism uh, uh, themselves. Uh, and let me also add that uh, our presence in uh, Afghanistan, NATO's biggest military operation ever, is of course part of our efforts to fight international terrorism. And we've also seen uh, ISIL present in Afghanistan, which is uh, just underlining the importance of our presence there. So all of this just underlines that we will uh, assess, we will uh, uh, follow the, the, the situation uh, closely, and we will discuss with the coalition uh, and, of course, with uh, the government of Iraq, and then make decisions uh, uh, later on on whether to increase our presence and our direct support for the uh, coalition. I welcome uh, that uh, uh, there are many members of the coalition, and uh, fighting ISIL and Turkey is one of the uh, NATO allies that uh, directly contribute to the uh, efforts of the coalition fighting uh, ISIL. Uh, I will not comment on operational issues inside Syria, uh, because I will leave that to the coalition. We'll go to the second row in the aisle here, please. Mm -hmm. On the other side, please. Uh, uh, thank you, Secretary General Laila Masadid, uh, uh, freelance from Kabul. Mm. Uh, have you discussed in two days about Afghanistan? Uh, what are your views on the current se security development in Afghanistan? Second, Afghanistan is not a secure country. Uh, situation is worse uh, day by day, and uh, 15 provinces are insecure in these days. Uh, 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 but uh, General uh, John Nicholas, uh, deputy spokesperson of Resolute Support, said uh, Taliban is not any more uh, tolerating us. What's your message? Thank you. We, we didn't have a dedicated meeting addressing Afghanistan at this defense ministerial, but uh, we discussed the situation in Afghanistan <coughs> during our meeting uh, yesterday as part of a broader discussion uh, related to the security challenges we face. And uh, we all uh, see that uh, the situation in Afghanistan is challenging. And the Afghan National uh, Security Forces uh, faces uh, many threats and they are uh, 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 challenged by different uh, uh, groups, different terrorist groups, but also by uh, the Taliban. At the same time, we have seen that the Afghan uh, National Army and Security Forces have been able to make a lot of progress. Uh, they have uh, shown their uh, uh, dedication, their professionalism, and they have been able to hold the ground and deny the Taliban uh, the possibility to uh, control any key areas. So what we have seen since uh, NATO ended its combat operation in Afghanistan, uh, at the end of 2014, uh, we have seen that the Afghan uh, forces themselves are able to take full responsibility for the security in Afghanistan and they are able to fight back uh, and to counter uh, different Taliban attacks. It's not easy. Uh, there is going to be uh, continued fighting in Afghanistan uh, and uh, we have to be prepared also for surprises, for the unforeseen. But I think that the main message is that the Afghan army and security forces have proven very capable, very determined, and by uh, continued support from uh, NATO with training, assistance and advice for the Afghan forces and continued uh, financial funding, I'm certain that they, will, uh, that they are able to continue to hold the ground and to fight back uh, against the uh, Taliban. We'll go to NPR, please. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General Terry Schultz. Um, with, with the new program being launched by the EU to train um, and equip the Libyan Coast Guard, um, some human rights groups have had concerns that these people must be vetted um, to the, the strongest degree possible, that there are still a lot of elements that we don't know there. Um, NATO ran into this when it, um, of course, had its operations in Libya, not knowing exactly who's on the ground. 
are you confident that um, you that this this can be done that there are competent Libyan authorities to take over um, to, to, to participate in this in this training who will be who will respect human rights rule of law etc thank you the situation in Libya is not easy and uh, and it's a uh, 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 challenge that we have uh, uh, different uh, uh, forces, uh, militia groups, uh, fighting each other. Uh, NATO strongly support the uh, UN uh, recognized uh, government of uh, a national accord. Uh, I met with the Prime Minister uh, uh, Sarraj uh, in, uh, in, uh, in September and uh, we had an experts group from uh, Libya here at NATO headquarters recently and we are now uh, working with them on how NATO can provide uh, support. Our main focus uh, is not about training, but NATO's main focus is how we can build uh, security institutions. And one of the reasons why we are so focused on how to build security institutions ex is uh, exactly to address one of the uh, challenges you are uh, uh, raising in your question. And that is, of course, that we in to be able to train the right people and to be able to build the right kind of forces, we need the security institutions which shall organize and lead them. And therefore, uh, we are focused on how we can help Libya build the necessary security institutions. Uh, and hopefully, we can be able to start that work uh, 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 at some stage. But uh, it has proven a bit, it, 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 what you have seen is that it has been, um, uh, it has taken some time uh, to uh, uh, find out exactly how NATO can, uh, in the best way, provide support for building security institutions. When it comes to the EU uh, 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 training, I think it is right for uh, me to leave that to the EU to uh, comment on. We're going to go to Russian TV in the fourth row, please. Mm. Uh, hello, just one question from RTVI, Russian on State Network. Uh, my question is connected with the tragic uh, events that we, tragic news that we received uh, from Syria uh, last evening. The airstrikes in the Idlib province that were held either by Syrian or by Russian warplanes killed at least 35 people there, including at least 22 children. And human rights organizations describe it as one of the deadliest attacks against the local civilians during the last months. So how do you see the situation? Do you consider this as war crimes? And do you see any possibilities now to influence and increase pressure on Russia in order to prevent the further escalation and further humanitarian crisis in Syria? Thank you. I'm very concerned about the situation in uh, Syria. And uh, it is uh, um, a, a tragic situation because we see that the fighting continues, the bombing continues, and uh, the human suffering continues. Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, I call on Russia uh, and the Assad regime to uh, stop uh, all the indiscriminate uh, bombing, which we have seen uh, also have uh, uh, also had ha have had um, where a lot of civilians have lost their lives, and uh, and uh, uh, I think it's important to continue uh, to support all efforts to try to at least reach an agreement on. Uh, a ceasefire and a lasting ceasefire as the first step towards a political uh, solution uh, to the conflict in uh, Syria. Uh, NATO will continue to provide support for the international coalition fighting ISIL. Uh, um, at the same time, we will continue uh, to support the efforts to try to find a political solution to the conflict. We'll go to ARD in the seventh row. Kai, Kai Kustner, ARD German Radio. Um, it's no secret that there are certain. Um, I'm over here. Um, over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that there are certain NATO countries, especially Germany and France, who strive for a stronger EU when it comes to defense. From what you've heard today from them and also from the high representative, are you reassured these possible double structures uh, can really be avoided in the future? I strongly believe that it's absolutely possible to strengthen European defence uh, in a way that it's uh, complementary and uh, not duplicating uh, the efforts uh, of uh, NATO. And the reason why I believe that is that uh, uh, 22 uh, members of NATO are at the same time members of the European uh, Union. And there is uh, no will to compete uh, with ourselves. 
Uh, and uh, and uh, I also believe that a stronger uh, European defence uh, will uh, strengthen NATO, uh, especially uh, because the focus now is on how uh, stronger European defence can provide more capabilities, better coordination and also increase defence spending. And that's something that uh, NATO has asked for for many, many years. And, uh, and uh, I'm certain, and it has been very clearly uh, conveyed from the European leaders, from High Representative Federica Mogherini, but also from others, for instance, from uh, Defence Minister Ursula von der Leyen, that this is not about uh, a European army. This is not about EU doing collective defence. This is not about the European Union building up structures that should start to compete with, with, with for instance, NATO structures our headquarters uh, uh, in, in, in Europe. But this is about how can the, the European nations develop capabilities, how can they be better coordinate their efforts, and how can they uh, provide more resources, increase defence spending. <coughs> and in that way, <coughs> I'm certain that uh, stronger Europe will uh, contribute to stronger uh, NATO. <coughs> We have time for just one or two more. We'll go to the Wall Street Journal, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Mr. Secretary General, uh, one, what did you uh, take away from the Sackyer's presentation uh, yesterday on uh, Russia? Um, and uh, over this meeting, you've announced a, a broad array of, of forces uh, to the east, and Russia has uh, countered with their own buildup in the Baltic Sea. Can NATO move fast enough uh, to respond to Russian moves? NATO is able to defend <coughs> all allies against any threat. And uh, we have adapted uh, our collective defense. We have increased the readiness and the preparedness of our forces. And we have uh, increased uh, our presence in the eastern part of the alliance. Uh, just to make sure that we also in a more challenging security environment with uh, more Russian military presence close to our borders, uh, continue uh, to deliver credible uh, defense. And again, the reason why we uh, are so focused on uh, credible defense and credible deterrence is that we know that uh, strong uh, defense, credible deterrence, is the best way not to provoke a conflict, but to prevent the conflict. Uh, so we have adapted, we have responded uh, to uh, the uh, increased uh, Russian military presence close to NATO uh, borders. The, the briefing uh, uh, that Sarkar gave us uh, outlined, in a way, the picture of Russia, which has um, invested heavily in uh, modern defense capabilities, uh, which is exercising its defense capabilities more uh, extensively now than before, uh, and also, of course, uh, Russia, which has used military force against uh, uh, neighbors. So uh, we are responding, uh, but we are responding in a measured and uh, a responsible way because uh, we are not uh, seeking a new Cold War. We want to keep tensions as low as possible. Last question to Georgian TV, please. Uh, Georgian Public Broadcaster, Ketevan Kardava. Mr. Secretary General, you uh, last night spoke about uh, Black Sea region security. Can you tell us more about the role of Georgia uh, and, uh, for example, in what formats we will participate in the future involvement of Georgia in uh, this uh, uh, new reality? And also, uh, can you comment about the um, elections held in uh, Georgia? I mean, parliamentary elections. We had no chance to ask this question after the election. That's why I'm asking. Thank you very much. On the elections, I welcome the elections. I welcome that uh, Georgia has uh, held elections which are widely regarded as uh, free and uh, fair. And uh, for me, this just uh, confirms that, uh, the, uh, that, that, that Georgia uh, is strengthening its uh, democratic uh, institutions. Um, uh, on Georgia and Black Sea security, uh, well, we uh, discussed yesterday and made decisions yesterday on uh, strengthening NATO presence in the Black Sea region uh, with a Romanian-led uh, uh, brigade uh, and with uh, more uh, presence in the air and at sea. Uh, we will come back to more details in February, but we have seen that uh, all of these some nations, for instance, the United Kingdom, announced that they will uh, provide some air assets for air policing uh, over uh, the, in the Black Sea uh, region. 
Um, Georgia is a key partner for uh, NATO. Uh, it's, a, it's a highly valued partner and we are working closely with Georgia in many different ways. Uh, uh, the whole North Atlantic Council recently visited Georgia uh, and we have uh, uh, and we inaugurated, I think uh, a year ago, uh, the new training uh, center in Georgia. And we will have a big exercise together with Georgia uh, uh, this year. Uh, so we are uh, working with Georgia in many different ways. We have NATO presence in Georgia, and Georgia is contributing to different NATO missions and activities. So we will continue to build a strong partnership with uh, Georgia that is uh, um, important for NATO, but also important for uh, the security of uh, Georgia. And that's the last uh, question, the last press conference of this ministerial. So thank you all very much. Thank you.